हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन मैट्रिक्स एनालिसिस विद एप्लीकेशंस सो इन द लास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स वी हैव सीन दैट व्हाट वेक्टर स्पेसेस सब स्पेसेस आर एंड व्हाट आर देयर बेसिक प्रॉपर्टीज वी हैव आल्सो सीन वी हैव आल्सो स्टडीड बेसिस एंड डायमेंशन ऑफ वेक्टर स्पेसेस एंड सब स्पेसेस नाउ दिस लेक्चर बेसिकली डील्स विद लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन व्हाट लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इज एंड हाउ वी कैन फाइंड आउट Uh, a linear transformation uh, from uh, v to w so let us see now what linear transformation is you see let v and w be two vector spaces over the field f a linear transformation which is also say uh, lt from v into w is a function from v into w such that t of alpha u plus v is equal to alpha t u plus t v for every u v in v and for all scalars alpha in field so basically what linear transformation is basically you see that uh, t is a linear transformation from a vector space v to vector space w over the field f if for every v1 v2 in v and for every alpha in field t of alpha v1 plus v2 is equals to alpha times t of v1 plus v2 now this this alpha v1 is nothing but scalar multiplication of a uh, alpha with a uh, element of a vector space so i am not putting dot here it's understood that it is alpha dot v1 okay similarly this is this t v1 is a element of w you see we have a we have vector space v we have vector space w and we define a linear transformation t from v to w if you have any element say v here the image of this element in w is simply tv okay so this tv is nothing but element of a vector space w this vector space w and this t v2 is also element of vector space w so this alpha into t of v1 means scalar multiplication of alpha with uh, element of w okay so i am not putting dot here it's understood that uh, this is nothing but alpha dot t of v1 so basically if this property hold for every v1 v2 in v and for every scalar alpha in field then we say that t is a linear transformation now this property can also be stated as we can also say that t of uh, v1 plus v2 is equals to t of v1 plus t of v2 first property a second property is t of alpha v1 is equals to alpha of t of v1 for all v1 v2 in v and alpha belongs to field okay so we club these two property here in the uh, in this step okay so we can also state this this single property as these two properties so if a if a function t from v to w satisfy these two property then we say that t is a linear map or a linear transformation now let us discuss few examples of linear transformation the first example is we have considered t from vector space r2 to a vector space r2 which is defined by t of x1 x2 as x1 plus x2 2x1 minus x2 so let us see we defined t from r2 to r2 as t of x1 x2 is equal to x1 plus x2 and uh, it is uh, it is 2x1 minus x2 now suppose you want to show that this is a linear map or linear transformation from r2 to r2 so how can we proceed for this so let us consider uh, v1 v2 as two element in r2 two element of this uh, vector space r2 so this implies v1 is something say x1 x2 and uh, x2 is something y1 y2 okay and now we have to show that if it's a linear map so we have to show that uh, t of uh, alpha v1 plus uh, v2 is equals to alpha times t v1 plus t v2 this we have to prove 
if it is a linear map. So, how can we proceed for this? Let us find uh, T alpha V1 plus V2 first, it is alpha times x1 x2 plus y1 y2. So, it is alpha x1 plus y1 and it is alpha x2 plus y2. Okay. So, T of alpha V1 plus V2 will be equals to T of this uh, element that means it is defined by this uh, definition. So, it is simply T uh, alpha x1 plus y1 plus alpha x2 plus y2 which is sum of these two element in the first component and 2 times the first component minus second component is the second element. So, it is uh, it is 2 times 2 times x1 which is alpha x1 plus y1 minus x2 is alpha x2 plus y2. Now, this can be written as alpha x alpha times x1 plus x2 okay, plus y1 plus y2 comma it is alpha times 2 x1 minus x2 plus 2 y1 minus y2. Okay. Now, this can be written as alpha times x1 plus x2 comma alpha 2 x1 minus x2 comma y1 plus y2 plus uh, comma it is uh, it is 2 2 y1 minus y2. Okay, addition of these two. If you add this with this, you get the first component. If you add this with this, we, we get the second component. Now, this is nothing but you can easily verify it is alpha times t of x1 x2. t of x1 x2 will be nothing but x1 plus x2 as a first component and 2 x1 minus x2 in the second component and alpha times this will give the, uh, the first component plus and this is t of y1 y2. So, that is nothing but alpha times t v1 plus t of v2. So, we have shown that this property holds for every v1, v2 and alpha belongs to field that means this map is a linear transformation. Okay. Now, similarly we can easily show that t from r2 to r2 which is given by this expression which is also called projection on the x axis is also a linear map. It follows the same lines as we did earlier in the first example. So, now the third, uh, third one is we consider t from the set of all polynomials of degree less than equal to n over the field r to uh, all polynomials of degree less than equal to n minus 1 over r defined by t of f x is equal to f dash x. Now, this t is also called differential operator okay, where f dash denotes the derivative of f x. Now, this is also a linear map. How it is a linear map? You can simply see here we have defined t of f x as f dash x, where f dash x is nothing but derivative of f x. Now, you take any f and g in p and x, p and r okay, and alpha belongs to field, field here is r. You take alpha f plus g t of this. So, t of this will be nothing but alpha f plus g whole derivative by this definition and this is nothing but alpha of f dash plus g dash and this is alpha times t of f plus t of g. So, we have shown that the property of linear transformation hold for every f and g in vector space p n over the field r that means this will be a linear transformation. Now, similarly, if we define a integral uh, integral of a to b of a function f x, where f x is a continuous function from a to b, then this is also a linear map. Okay. So, this is very easy to show again, because if you take a if you take t of f x as all a to b f x d x, I mean t of f, I think t of f, yeah it is t of f. If you take t of f uh, defined as this, now you take any f and g in set of continuous function in the interval close interval a to b and any alpha in uh, field and you take alpha f plus g the t of this 
that will be equals to integral a to b alpha f plus g x into d x which is equal to integral a to b alpha f x plus g x whole d x and which is equal to alpha times integral a to b f x d x plus integral a to b g x d x and this is equal to alpha times t of f plus t of g. So, we have shown that this property holds for every f and g in the set of continuous function in the closed interval a to b and alpha belongs to field. This means this map is a linear map. Now, similarly, if you see the last example, you see we have considered a, a be a uh, matrix, be a fixed matrix of order m cross n and we define t as r n cross 1 means it is a it is a column vector basically to a column vector of m dimensional space such that T x equals to A x. Now, again this A, this A is fixed. If you take any x and y in uh, R n cross 1 and take C x plus y. So, it is easy to show that it is nothing but uh, alpha times uh, T x plus T y. So, it will be a linear map. Now, let us see some basic properties of linear transformation. The first property is if we consider a linear map from v to w, v and w are the vector spaces of the field f, then the first property is t of 0 of v, 0 of mean v means additive identity of v, always map to additive identity of w. Okay. Now, it is very easy to show, we are considering here uh, t from vector space v to w. What I want to show, if we have an additive identity here, which, which we denote as g or 0 of v, 0 v means additive identity of vector space v, always map to additive identity of vector space w by this linear transformation t. So, it is very easy to show, you see that uh, for a linear map alpha v plus uh, say uh, p is equals to alpha times t v plus t p and this is true for all uh, v and p belongs to v and for all alpha belongs to field since it is a linear transformation. Now, you first in this to in order to we have to show that t of 0 v is equals to 0 w okay, this we have to show. So, you first uh, put uh, p equal to 0 since it is true for every uh, alpha belongs to field and p and v belongs to v. So, it will be true for p equal to 0 also, 0 means uh, 0 of of course uh, v. Okay. So, this means it is 0 of alpha v is equals to alpha times t v plus t of 0 v. Because additive identity plus an element of vector space is itself, that is why we are having here alpha v. Now, in order to show that, uh, now you take say alpha equal to say you take v equal to 0, okay, you take alpha equal to 1 okay, and uh, v equal to 0. Since it is true for every alpha and every v, so it will be true for true for alpha equal to 1 and v equal to 0 also. So, now we will obtain 1 dot v is always v, so it is v, I mean v is 0 here, 0 of v which is equals to 1 dot uh, t of v will be t of v and v is 0. So, it is t of 0 v plus t of 0 v. So, let uh, t of 0 v is basically let us suppose it is w. So, we are obtaining w equal to w plus w. Now, w is an element of capital W which is a vector space. Now, if it is a vector space, so its additive inverse will exist. So, you can always add with additive inverse of w both the sides element with its inverse give identity element. So, it is 0 of w is equal to w plus 0 of w. So, this implies w equal to 0 of w and this implies w is nothing but w is nothing but you see uh, t of 0 of v. So, this t of 0 of v is equal to t of 0 of w. So, this is the first most property that uh, if it is a linear map, so t of 0 will always ma map to uh, 
0 of w additive identity of w. The second property is T of minus v minus v is additive inverse of v ok always map to or always equal to negative of T v that means additive identity of T of v. So, again it is easy to show you see we have to show that uh, T of minus v is equals to minus of T v for every v in v ok. Now, we know that if it is a linear transformation then T of uh, alpha v plus uh, p will be equals to T alpha v plus T p for all v p belongs to vector space v and for all alpha belongs to field this we already know ok. Now, you put p equal to 0 first since it is true for every p. So, it will be true for p equal to 0 also 0 means 0 of v ok. So, it, it will be T of alpha v the left hand side will be equals to alpha times T of v plus T of 0 v. Now, T of 0 of v is equal to 0 of w. So, it is alpha times T v plus 0 of w which is equals to alpha times T v. Now, you substitute put alpha equal to minus 1. If you put alpha equal to minus 1, we have already shown in the vector spaces that minus 1 dot v is nothing but minus v. So, it is T of minus v and it is minus 1 dot element of a vector space w will be minus times that element that is minus of T v. So, we have shown this property also. The last property is T of alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 x 2 and so on up to alpha n x n is equals to alpha times sum of alpha uh, alpha is t of x i is where x i is other element in vector space and alpha is other element in field. Again it is easy to show the result is very trivial you see t times alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 x 2 and so on alpha and x n if you take this. Now, you, you take this element as suppose capital X. So, we know the property of vector space. So, so, by the property of vector space this will be equals to alpha 1 times T x 1 plus T capital X. Now, it is alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 1 T x 1 plus T of alpha 2 x 2 and so on alpha n x n. Again, again you take this as a capital Y. Again you apply the property of vector space I mean uh, linear transformation. So, this will be alpha 2 T of x 2 plus t of y. So, similarly if you extend this up to n times, so we will get the same result which we are having here ok. Now, the next theorem is let v be a finite dimensional vector space over the field f and let v 1 v 2 up to v n be an ordered basis for v ok. Let w be a vector space over the same field f and let w 1 w 2 up to w n be any vectors in capital W. Then there is a unique linear transformation T from V to W such that T of V i equal to W i for i equal to 1 to n ok. That uh, what I want to say basically in this uh, theorem that you are having a linear transformation T from V to W ok. Here you are having some vectors say V 1, V 2, v n which is an ordered basis of capital V ok. So, there will always there will exist a unique uh, linear transformation T this T such that such that T of V i will map to W i W 1 W 2 up to W n ok. This is the main result that uh, there will exist a uh, unique linear transformation T from V to W such that this happens. Now, proof is very easy you see here you take any let V belongs to V ok. If any V belongs to this space and this we already know that V 1 V 2 up to V n is a basis is a ordered basis for V ok. If it is a basis this means any element V in this vector space can be written as linear combination of element of the basis because it, it is a basis that means this the span of this will generate the entire vector space V. So, if you take any element V in this vector space 
that can be written as linear combination of elements of vi's okay so this this implies there will exist unique alpha 1 alpha 2 up to alpha n in field such that t of v will be l i mean sorry t v will be equals to alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 and so on up to alpha n v n ok. Now, for, for this v for this v we can define t of v as alpha alpha 1 t of v 1 as w 1 t of v 2 as w 2 and so on. Now, this t is well defined and it is clear that t of v i is w i. Now, we have to show that it is this map is linear and number 2 this is unique. So, for linear how we can show linear you can take uh, say v and uh, p are two elements in w I mean in v you take any alpha belongs to field and we have to show that alpha t of alpha v plus p is equals to alpha t v plus t w I mean t v. So, how can we show this? So, we have to prove this thing t of alpha v plus p is equals to alpha times t v plus t p. So, this to prove ok. Now, now let let p since p is also some element in vector space uh, v. So, this p can be written as some linear combination of element of v i's. So, this will be beta 1 v 1 plus beta 2 v 2 and so on up to beta n v n and this implies t of p will be beta 1 t of v 1 is w 1. So, it is w 1 plus and so on up to beta n w n. Now, you take alpha v plus p ok because, because we have to show this result for a, for a t as a linear map. Now, alpha p plus v will be what? It is alpha alpha 1 plus ok alpha alpha 1 plus beta 1 times v 1 this is p this is v plus alpha alpha 2 plus beta 2 times v 2 and so on alpha alpha n plus beta n times v n. And what is t of alpha v plus p? This will be t of this ok. This will be t of uh, t of alpha alpha 1 plus beta 1 ok ok v 1 plus alpha alpha 2 plus b 2 times v 2 alpha alpha n plus beta n times v n. Now, this is equals to it is alpha it is you see it is alpha alpha 1 plus beta 1 times t of v 1 which is w 1 plus alpha alpha 2 plus beta 2 times t of v 2 which is w 2 and so on alpha alpha n plus beta n times t of v 1 which is w n. So, it is alpha alpha 1 alpha times alpha 1 w 1 and so on up to alpha n w n and plus the beta 1 w 1 and so on up to beta n w n which is equals to alpha times t of v plus t of p from here and from here. So, we have shown that t, uh, t of alpha p plus alpha v plus p is equal to this, this means this is a linear map. The next thing to show that it is uh, this linear map is unique. So, so, in order to show that this linear map is unique, you consider a linear map u such that t of uh, v i is w i for all i. Then if you write uh, u of v from here you see if you take any v in uh, again in uh, v then that v can be uniquely expressed as alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 and so on up to alpha n v n. So, what will be u of v then? u of v will be uh, by this expression that will be u of alpha 1 v 1 and so on up to alpha n v n ok and this will be alpha 1 u of v 1 and so on up to alpha n u of v n 
and this will be alpha 1 w 1 and so on up to alpha n w n. Okay. That means, it is equal to T of V again from here. So, that means, since the expressions are same that means, transformation is unique. So, we have shown that this is a linear map and the transformation is unique. Hence, hence we have proved the theorem. Okay. Now, the next is determine whether there exists a linear transformation in the following cases and if exist find the general formula. So, let us start with the first problem. Okay. If we are having say T from R2 to R2 which is defined as this expression then can then can we find a linear transformation such that these property hold. How can we see? So, let us see let us start with the first problem. So, here it is T of R2 to R2 and here T of T of 1 2 is 3 0 and T of 2 1 is 1 2. Okay. First of all, first of all we have seen that these two elements are in R 2. Okay. First of all let us see, first of all observe that is uh, are they linearly independent? So, answer is yes, we cannot write 1 2 as a linear combination of 2 1. Okay. So, yes they are linearly independent. Now, what will be the what will be the dimension of R 2? Dimension of R 2 will be 2 and if there exists any 2 linearly independent vector in R 2, so that will be the basis of R 2. I mean that will be the uh, that the span of those 2 elements will generate the entire vector space. Okay. Now, these elements 1 2 and 2 1 in R 2. So, the span of these 2 elements the span of these 2 elements will be definitely R 2 because they are linearly independent. That is what is what is the dimension of R n? Dimension of R n is n. Okay. And if you are having any n dimension any uh, uh, set containing n linearly independent vectors. Okay. So, that will be the dimension that will be the basis of R n. There are infinite bases of R n, there are infinite bases of R 2. One of the bases is this, you take any 2 linearly independent vectors in R 2, the span of this will that definitely generate R 2. This is one of the bases. Okay. Now, uh, is there exists any linear transformation such that this uh, this uh, equal to this and this is equal to this. So, and if, if yes, how can you find that? So, you see you take any x y in R 2, any x y here. Now, since this span of this generates entire R 2, so that means uh, there will exist some scalars alpha and beta such that uh, such that this x y can be written as linear combination of these two vectors. Okay. So, this implies x is equals to alpha plus 2 beta and y is equals to 2 alpha plus beta. So, it is alpha plus 2 beta is equal to x and 2 alpha plus beta is equals to y. Now, you multiply this by 2 and subtract these 2 equations what you will obtain this is minus 3 alpha okay, multiply by 2 and subtract with this first equation and this is equals to x minus 2 y and that implies that implies alpha is equals to 2 y minus x by 3. Now, what will be beta? Beta will be nothing but y minus 2 alpha. So, beta will be y minus alpha is 2 by 3 times 2 y minus x. So, it is 3 y minus 4 y that is minus y plus 2 x upon 3. Now, this x y is alpha times the first element the first vector and beta times the second vector. What is alpha? Alpha is 2 y minus x upon 3 times 1 2 and plus 2 x minus y upon 3 times 2 comma 1. Now, what is t of x comma y? Since t is linear 
So, it is 2 y minus x upon 3 times t of this because it is a it is some scalar plus 2 x minus y upon 3 times t of 2 1. So, this is equals to 2 y minus x upon 3 times what is t of 1 2 it is given here 3 0 and plus 2 x minus y upon 3 times t of 2 1 is given as 1 2. Now, you can simplify this and we can easily find out what is t of x y. Okay. So, in this way we can find out a linear transformation t from r 2 to r 2. Okay. Now, if you see the second example, okay, here what here three elements are given to you that is t of 0 1 is 3 4, t of 3 1 is 2 2 and t of 3 2 is 5 7. Of course, 0 1 3 1 and 3 2 are not linearly independent because the uh, dimension of R 2 is only 2 and here we are having 3 vectors. So, you take any 2 uh, any 2 linearly independent I mean any 2 uh, ally vectors say 0 1 and 3 1 find out a linear transformation as we did in the example first here and if that linear transformation satisfy the third expression also then there exist such linear transformation otherwise otherwise we say that that linear transformation does not exist. So, if we have a conditions here in the first example we are having two conditions only and the vectors are linearly independent. Okay. Here we are having uh, we are having three vectors. Okay. So, basically if you have to see that uh, uh, if you have to see that such linear transformation exists then you can write uh, 3 2 or 3 1 any one vector as a linear combination of remaining 2 and try to see that whether whether the expressions are also same or not images are also same or not. If they are not that means that linear transformation does not exist. Okay. Now, for the third example you see it is defined from P 2 to P 2 p 2 is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2. So, what is the dimension of p 2? Dimension of p 2 will be 3. So, for a unique to in order to find a unique LT unique linear transformation from p 2 to p 2 we must have at least 3 independent conditions, but here the conditions are only 2. So, this means there exist infinitely many linear transformation there exist infinitely many linear transformation from p 2 to p 2 here. And if you are interested to find out one such linear transformation, then you take a vector independent of this and this, take any image of this and that then you can find out. Say for example, here what is given to us, given to you t is from p 2 to p 2. Okay. Now, t of 1 plus x is x plus 2 okay. and t of x square is 4 x. only two conditions are given to you. So, there will be infinitely many linear transformation from P 2 to P 2 satisfying these two equations. Suppose, we are interested to find out one such linear transformation. So, how can we proceed? You let uh, you take T of say uh, T of say x as okay, say x square. This is this will make uh, these vectors as linearly independent these three vectors as linearly independent. Okay. We, you, you can easily verify that these three vectors are linearly independent. Now, you take any any polynomial of P 2 say a plus b x plus c x square that can be written as alpha times 1 plus x plus beta times x square plus gamma times x because these three vectors are linearly independent and how many vectors these are? 3 and the and the dimension of p 2 is 3. So, this will form a basis of p 2. So, any vector in p 2 can be written as linear combination of element of the basis. Now, this implies if you take here the constant here is alpha. So, a is equal to alpha. The coefficient of x is alpha plus gamma and that is equal to b. The coefficient of x square is beta which is c. Now, this implies gamma is equals to b minus a because alpha is a. 
So, we can say that a plus b x plus c x square will be alpha times alpha is a a 1 plus x plus beta is c x square and gamma is b minus a times x. Now, you take t of a plus b x plus c x square that will be equals to a times t of 1 plus x c times t of x square plus b minus a times t of x and that will be equal to a times t of 1 plus x is x plus 2 plus c t of x square is 4 x plus b minus a t of x is x square. So, that will be equal to basically b minus a times x square plus 4 c plus a times x plus 2 a. So, this is the required linear transformation one such linear transformation. So, there are infinite infinite ways to consider the third, third expression. So, there are infinite linear transformation of such type, but one such linear transformation is this. So, in this way we have seen that uh, what linear transformation is and what are the basic properties of linear transformation. Okay. Now, there may be some examples say, uh, say you consider t from r 2 to r 2 as t of say x y as 1 plus x comma y. Now, it is not a linear transformation, we can easily verify this. You see, if you take t of 1 0, it is simply uh, it is simply 2 comma 0. If you take t of 0 1, it is uh, again uh, 1 and 1. If you take t of sum of these two, that is 1 and 1, sum of these two is 1 and 1 that must be equal to sum of these two by the property of linear transformation, but by the definition it is coming 2 comma 1 which is not equal to sum of these two. So, that means it is not a linear transformation. Now, similarly if you define say uh, t from r 2 to r 2 as t of x y is equal to say x square comma y it is also not a linear transformation. It is very easy to show. You simply give a counter example for this. Okay. So, in this lecture we have seen that what linear transformations are and what are the basic properties of linear transformation. In the next lecture we will see some more properties of linear transformation. Thank you.